Hello and welcome to the Health Oddity Podcast, episode 144. Uh, this episode it is with the three hosts again. And then from next week, episode 145, we have uh, three guests uh, in a row lined up for the next three weeks. So today is, uh, is Pete, Paul and myself uh, again talking through what's going on uh, with us in terms of training, uh, what is going on with our clients, our businesses, what we're thinking about, the conversations we've been having, that sort of thing. And then, like I say, the next three weeks, uh, we, ha- we have guests uh, guests lined up. So, um, Mr. Peter Lant, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Been out for a walk as normal. It's nice and sunny. Fantastic. It's all good. It's and I'm really- even... I'm, I'm even sacrificing for myself so we've got scaffolding up at the front of the building at the minute but i'm still using my wobbly pull-up bar but the scaffolding is probably a lot th- more thick isn't it as well the grip yeah. it'd be good for grip strength but yeah the the the, the, the uh scaffolding bars are going to be fatter yeah so yeah cool excellent no well, like i said we just before we started recording i said your your you would i saw a set of pull-ups you were doing the other day um on instagram uh in your courtyard uh, with the top off filmed from the back. And you can certainly see the uh, the fruits of your labor, I suppose, all these pull-ups you've been doing for months and years on end. You can really well, see the, the change, can't you? Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I think you said you're thick. <laughs> you I said you're looking, I, I nearly put you're looking thick and juicy, but I thought that was a bit. <laughs> He's got but, his like, Lululemons on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think, no, yeah, honestly. You see that, that across your, well, your back, your arms, your shoulders, everything's like really like thickened up, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Well, which there's a few things there. I used to hate pull ups, but I was never any good at them. But now I've got better at them. But it's, it's funny that because I've been doing a lot of them. And um, they always used to give us elbow tendonitis as well. But I've kind of changed the way I grip the bar because that's basically what it's all I was basically hanging off the bar and just trying to pull it instead of activate in the right places but also um it's testament to the fact that you can still put muscle on in your 40s mm. and i also <laughs> think late, late 40s even and i also think that probably because you are you know i mean i've been listening to loads of the dan john um podcast recently and i know he talks about maps doesn't he middle age pull up syndrome um these elbow elbow problems that yeah you, in your middle ages doing too many pull ups but he, he often talks about you know what are your gaps and if you're doing too much and most people do too much pressing um but if you but the amount of pull-ups you are doing you are you are also kind of balancing that with the amount of overhead pressing that you're doing aren't you so you're kind of you're probably you're 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 um complementing the pulling and the pressing and it's probably matching quite well so you're not kind of overloading the pulls because you're you're doing the, the pressing as well so that's probably got something to do with it as well i'd imagine yeah yeah, I, I I think so. Um, I know I did I did have elbow problems about a year ago, and it was affecting my pistols and everything because like even holding the bell for a pistol out in front's really hard. But I noticed like that when I do that with my hands, that one mm. the middle the little finger does that, and that's all connected, isn't it? So if I can grip the bar like that and squeeze and squeeze my little finger as much as possible, it saves. I can feel. My lat switch on more, and it um it saves my elbows. So mm. that's all. I, that's bit literally all I've been doing. Yeah, I've been doing that on the presses as well, and it's it. My left shoulder just feels so much better. No, that's fantastic. You've actually just reminded me. I was having some elbow problems uh, on both, but mainly on the left. But that was when I was doing lots of the weighted pull ups, and then Paul sort of stripped that right back, and I've just been doing body weight pull ups and not and, and reduced the volume and the reps down. And and actually, I just, you know, when you kind of suddenly think you saying that, I just thought, actually, my elbow doesn't hurt anymore. And it hasn't hurt for a while. You just kind of forget, but it's kind of gone, you know. So uh, yeah. that's really, yeah, no, that's really, really good. Uh, Mr. Paul Bassett, how are you doing? I saw you juggling the other day. Yeah, well, it's a skill I developed at the age of 13 that, you know, I packed into the back of my brain and have never accessed it again until I suddenly bought a load of tennis balls for the studio. I thought, ah. Oh, I used to be able to juggle. Um, so I thought I'd just show off, you know. And you still can juggle. But yeah, just. I can't <laughs> do it with four anymore. I used to be able to do it with four. But um, yeah, I go up and down, you know, do a kind of like uh, people do Turkish get ups with, uh, with, with kettlebells. You can get up and down from a lunge onto your back, juggling and things like that. It's all, hmm. it's all good stuff, a good way 
switching the brain on particularly is um you know warming up is i mean i train on my own so one of the hardest things is just getting yourself into the mindset to train particularly if you've got a big session you can't just rely on someone motivating you or getting you getting it all structured you just got to kind of show up and do it and um to get yourself in the right mindset when you know you've got a tough workout is is, is often a challenge mm. so if you can come at it from a different angle mm. you know juggling not enough people do i mean is is juggling in strong first i, I can't remember is that Not one that of the tests? no but i know no, but i have no. i have seen i've seen pete do pistols while doing a rubik's uh not rubik's yeah rubik's cube i think yeah. I? yeah yeah he's done pistol squats while doing a rubik's cube so he's kind of operating the uh you know using the mind and the, and the body as well which is good and just to explain to people if if paul's sound is slightly different today or if he's if he's uh he's at his studio and there is some drilling in the background so i think he's kind of mute muting and unmuting to speak to us uh and that's also why his video is not on i think uh but he is yeah, there. He is yeah it is yeah well, basically, I, I, you know, when there's something in your in your room that's annoying you, um, and so I finally kind of gave into it, and I got got a got a handyman in. He's a good guy to just move a load of weights that I bolted onto the wall, and now I want them in another place. I'm just being a perfectionist, really, but I thought I'd just get it done now while it's in my head. Yeah. So you've got this lovely new building that's all been uh, brand new, and you're already kind of, you know drilling multiple holes and banging banging holes in the wall and, and all sorts but it's going to be perfect yeah yeah I, i'm making my mark on it like a dog around a lamppost <laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> me. so i mean what's been going on for for you guys in the like in the last week then what is uh what's been happening with with clients and 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 things and uh and your own training or any any conversations you've been having of note or thoughts you've been having of note or things you've been working on with, with your coaches and that sort of thing. Shall I, shall I start? Yeah. Yeah. Um, start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and break the silence. Um, yeah. I, I mean, for a lot of what we do for my clients is just, um, as we come into the summer, really, it's just keeping people's focus really. So a lot of what we're doing is trying to organize some social events just trying to bring people together. I've got a strength challenge, which I'm about to launch for my clients so they can all come down and test their, their strength. It's a bit like your tactical strength challenge, which is great. You know, it's, um, um, just allows people to kind of, um, get together. I mean, I think it's the community aspect, which is really great. Particularly since, since we've got the new studio ourselves, being able to really kind of, um, you know, cause, cause, cause people, when they work out, they can go over to the sofas after the workout and meet the next group of people coming in um it's it's, it's it's a great opportunity for people to start kind of building relationships which i think i think really helps and that's something you've always done really well james I remember when i first came down to your to your space you know there was a great sense that you know there was places where people could hang out and uh obviously on social media you you, you post a lot of stuff about things you do as a as a group um i think i think that's a big thing that people have always lacked when they've gone to the gym is this sense that you know, have some ownership over the, you know, and, and, and a sense of kind of community in place, um, which I, which we didn't really have before we moved to the new studio because our, our previous studio, you kind of, people would come in and once they finish the session, they'd file out and go and just go and get changed or whatever. Now they can hang about and talk and, you know, commiserate and congratulate depending on how the session went. <laughs> but, mm. um, that's what I've noticed. So particularly as we come into the summer where people start to go on holidays and stuff like that. Uh, and the sun, we've you know we've had the doors open and let some air in, and you know it's uh, it definitely feels like uh, it's a big part of what we're doing at the moment, it's just really fostering that connections between people. Yeah, I think the 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 early the light mornings and the light evenings are really good as well uh, at the moment because people kind of come in to train. Well, our first sessions are sort of six a.m. or six ten a.m., and uh, you know people are turning up to train at that time and. You can just tell they're in a in a better frame of mind at that time of the morning, you know, and we've got the shutters wide open, especially, you know, if the sun's out and it, it's, it's not so hard to wake up in the mornings, in the evenings, you know, you when it gets dark at 4 p.m., you know, coming out at six or seven is quite hard work venturing out into the dark once you've got home from work or whatever and you've maybe sat on the sofa. Um, but at the moment, people can finish training at, you know, eight or nine p.m. and it's still light and 
you you kind of feel like you've got a real evening there, which is great. And uh, yeah, no, I think that we, we've got, I think, what, when is it? The first weekend in June, we've got our, our annual walking weekend that we're doing um, in the, I did say, the Chilterns, I think it's called, near Oxford. Is it near Oxfordshire? Something like that, anyway. Um, but we're going there for a weekend walking with a group of about 20 members. So um, yeah, I think that's so important. And because I think a lot of people who go to kind of commercial gyms and and things people tend to kind of go in and maybe put their headphones on and it can it can be even though you're exercising around other people if you're not taking part in the exercise classes it can probably be quite a um a solitary pursuit you know whereas i know that pete as well with his group of guys who train outside and and obviously yours paul and mine it's it becomes more like you're you're, you're turning up and you've got friends around you and it's more it's social as well as training which i think is a huge part of um uh what was the what was the word that compliance you know or that kind of uh, you, know, you know continuing i can't think of the correct word at the moment it begins with an a i think um, adherence you know yeah. that kind of adherence and that kind of sticking with it um is a big james part. do you do you, do you still yeah. train with other people because i remember you used to train you had a group of two guys you used to train with at certain times because you because you've got a more structured program now do you still train with them no i don't i don't train i train on my own but i train and i think um when we had dr paul bedford on the retention guru he spoke about this he said he said you some people can sort of train on their own you know in terms of you know they're in their garage or in their they're in it you know they are totally on their own when they're training um i suppose like a lot of what what pete does um is is training on his own um People can train in groups, you know, as part of, you know, a large group class or a small group class. And then people can train on their own, but in the presence of others. And I kind of train on my own, but in the presence of others. So I kind of feel that I get, so you get a little bit of banter in between sets and you get the, you can feed a little bit of energy off of other people as well. Um, but, you know, I'm essentially doing my own thing on my own, but there are other people around. So I've kind of got a little bit of a mix, really, um, the way I do things now. Yeah. I've got a question for you on that because there's someone who I know who owns a gym who basically if they, 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 they have to work out at home because right. so they've got all that stuff at home now. They've got a lot of bells and bar, pull-up bars and stuff like that because it's if they try to train at their gym, they get too, ask too many questions because they're the owner of the gym and they're in charge. So either from the staff or from clients and what have you. So how do you, do you have to manage that? Or do you, are you like, do you have a big sign on your head saying <laughs> off duty? <laughs> no, I think I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm fine to talk to people. It, like, you know, when you're doing sort of strength training, especially like strength training with, with, you know, Paul McElroy stuff, you're often doing lots of sets and you're resting a lot of the time, you know, mm. because I'm not, I'm not just, you know, it's not high intensity training. I'm kind of training, then recovering, then training, then recovering, then training. So while I'm in between sets, I don't mind talking to people and having a chat, but then I think people kind of know that when I'm actually mid set or when I'm actually training, I'm training. But then as soon as I put the weight down at the end of the set, yeah, ask me a question or I can talk about something. Um, I was training the other day on Saturday with, um, and uh, I think Lauren Emery was there as well. And um, I was doing, how many sets would it have been? Uh, 28 sets of presses. And, and I had it set on my, yeah, 28 sets of presses. And I had it set on my timer to do a set every two minutes and 15 seconds. And I was doing like ladders. So it ended up being like an hour and three minutes of pressing standing there. But, you know, when you're doing the one-on-one, -on -one, then you've got like two minutes that you basically yeah. just so so then i'll go and do a job in between or i'll kind of have a chat or i'll go and put the kettle on and i'll come back the buzzer will go i'll do the next set so i kind of um yeah i i i'm i'm very structured with the way i do it um the other day i was deadlifting and then someone was in the gym like laughing i think they go in i was super set in the deadlifts with uh with a bit of hoovering in between you know yeah kind of do do your set set of deadlifts put it down Hoover kind of like a quarter of the floor space, you know, do your next set of deadlifts, put it down, Hoover the next quarter of the floor space. So yeah, just uh, people are used to me training and they know when I'm serious and when I need to be left alone and when I'm okay to have a chat, you know? So that's a long answer, but that's, <laughs> that's kind of it. 
it's funny that because that comes up with the um your what the concept you were talking about a while ago of no no extra time tasks is that what it was oh yeah net no, no extra time yeah. tasks n-e-t-t yeah 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 because because I, I obviously train at home so in between that i'll be you know i'll feed the dog i'll i'll get me breakfast ready um yeah. it, and then shove it in the oven and it just cooks in the oven while i'm waiting and then i pull it out let it cool down and all that and i know exactly i know the times to do it and i'll get emails done in between mm. and what have you because i mean like you know training with paul it takes like the 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 sessions take a long time but i get a morning's work done while i'm while i'm doing it as well mm. and that's just like i just find that quite interesting because i've had a few people who are feeling a bit tight and stuff at the minute and I'm like, well, you can do mobility at home. You know, oh, yeah, I can't fit it in though. And it's like, you, you, you can, you can do it when you're making a cup of tea, you can do it, you know, you get up every hour and do something. Mm. Uh, oh, but I forget. And it's like the, all these things, it's like forgetting isn't a thing. Just set a timer or um, saying you can't isn't true because you can. And it's like, it's just little things like that. And it's, if you get used to it, you get lo- you get so much done. Are you yeah, so, I used to. I was just going to say, I used to always say to to clients. I mean, going back, this is not really applicable now. It shows how times have changed. But I used to sort of say, when you're watching TV, when there's an ab break, you yeah. know, do like some stretching or get into a deep squat or do five press ups or something when you have an ab break. But now and then and then because then that would mean that you used to get adverts on TV. You probably still do, but I don't watch you know normal TV with ads anymore. But you probably get an ad break every fifteen minutes or something. And it would kind of be, so if you did something, you know, like that, like 10 squats or five press ups or did a stretch every 15 minutes, it's quite a good thing. But now we don't yeah. really have that break. It's the same kind of thing, I suppose. And what you could do to get even more in is move to the States because there's ad breaks every like <laughs> <laughs> you'd be You'd be the most mobile person in the world, wouldn't you? <laughs> and Steph, my wife used to work in um, TV scheduling uh, for like Paramount um, TV and they did Com- Comedy Central and Nickelodeon and mtv and all that sort of thing and she used to schedule all the kind of on-air sort of promotions and graphics and all that sort of stuff and i think there was a i may be maybe wrong but the, the essence is right that every hour you're allowed there was like 12 minutes of adverts out of every hour of programming or something like that you know so actually you know 12 minutes out of every hour doing something would be quite uh would be quite good that'd be pretty yeah be yeah amazing. you sat there yeah. yeah no great um yeah, so we've got the uh, what we got. We've got I've got I picked up um, John Ingram this morning for the uh, for the flexible steel tomorrow and the strong first body weight this weekend. So we've got loads of people coming down to the gym for that this weekend. So that's going to be uh, something that we're we're really looking forward to. Um, and yeah, I know you're fantastic, obviously with your with your pistols and that, Pete. But I sent you something, didn't I, this week where I've just kind of just got the pistol, like, and it's the first time I've done it with the weight, you know. In yeah. front and gone full depth so but i picked up john this morning and i said to him oh i've got to do my three tests for you at some stage this weekend to recertify and he said no you've only got to do one i said no i've got to do the pull-ups the pistol and the press-up no you just do the one arm one leg press-up for recertifying but i'm glad i've got to the st- i mean the pull-ups are kind of you know a day uh, by the by but i'm glad i've got to the stage so i, I, I and he said you can show me all three if you want i thought yeah, I will do because I've been training them. <laughs> I've been training for months to do it, you know. So, so I will show you all three. But uh, that's been that's been really good. That's been really good with consistency and things. Yeah, uh, honestly, mine are feeling amazing. So I I I wrote a post the other day. Um, I, I, I'm not going to that. I forget what it was, but the um. I'm now using a, I'm using a 28 and doing volume with it and it'll get to five sets of 10. So instead of doing 10 sets of five, I'll be doing five sets of 10, which is very different. Um, and anyone who I've ever trained when they get it wrong and they get the sets and the reps mixed up. So, sorry. So you're now doing five sets of 10. And uh, well, I'm, I'm building up to five sets of yeah. 10. With each I, but yeah. Five sets of 10. Yeah. is very different from 10 sets of five. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very definitely. different. Yeah. Because I remember two years ago doing pistols with a 28. Might, might have been less than two years ago, like 18 months ago, doing pistols with a 28, and I'd miss them sometimes because my legs were just... My, I just couldn't do it. Whereas mm. now, it's like it feels like nothing. It really mm. does feel like not. It feels... I mean, 10's going to be hard, but I've, been, I've done sets of threes and fours this week, 
I think I've got fives tomorrow and it feels absolutely, it just, just down and up, down and up, down and up. It's great. And I had somebody comment on it on, I can't, I think it was Instagram or whatever saying, uh, saying, is that your knees making that noise? Cause I've got squeaky floorboards as I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's great. No, that's really, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, and what I said to John today was because I've got there now and I did get there before, but now they are better now than they were before. So I'm kind of, my pistols now are better than they were last time when I had to, had to do it. So, but what I did last time was I got there and then once I passed the tests, I just kind of stopped because my yeah. focus then went on to maybe barbell stuff for the SFL. So I stopped doing pistols and the one arm and the one leg press up. Um, and now I think I'm de determined that I'm going to, now that I've got there, I'm going to maintain it because, and even if it's, I know you, we used to talk about this, your, your one rep a week program, wasn't it? Yeah. We just did the one on one leg press up once a week and it just keeps you able to do it from like a nervous system point of view. And I think what I'll do is I'll continue doing like a Sunday morning session for like 60 to 90 minutes, just doing body weight, just working on, you know, pull-ups, one arm press ups, one arm, one leg press ups, working on my pistol squats, you know, and if I can just do that once a week, then it will stop me losing it and I'll probably get better as well, you know? So, um, because otherwise if you stop doing it for a year and then you decide you want to try and do it again, obviously you're starting from nearer the goal than you were because you've been there before and your nervous system has been there before. And obviously I'm stronger, so it's easier to get there, but it's still a, you know, a three or four month build up period again to, to get it back. So I want to avoid that. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that I was going to do a video on this as well of me and one of the guys in the park. Cause I had a new guy who started and he's got really long legs. He's he's about an inch taller than me, but his legs come up to like <laughs> come up to here. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, he's got he's got because I was watching him do um swings and when he picked the bell up, he was like he was having an almost squat down. And then I said, just stand up a second. I looked and I went and stood next to him. I got you, I went, you've got really long legs, haven't you? And he was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um it, and so then I got the other, this other guy, Johnny over, who I use as an example all the time, because he's like six foot five, but when we're sitting down, he's the same height as me. Yeah. His legs are really <laughs> long. So squats for him are look totally different to everybody else's, right? And now that, this brings me to you because you've got long arms and long legs, haven't you? Hmm. So pistols are going to be harder. Pull-ups are going to be harder. Presses are going to be, everything's going to be harder. Um, and because like for me, I remember when we did the body weight a couple of years ago and Daniel, is it Vintala? Oh, Vintella, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was like, you're naturally good at body weight stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I don't weigh anything and I've got really short arms and legs. So it like, <laughs> makes everything much easier, doesn't it? But this is where, like the point I'm trying to make is like, you know, for listeners is, is just because like someone does one thing one way, it doesn't mean you have to do it as well because, um, because everyone's bodies are different, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I mean, Paul, you're obviously, but I mean, you're what are you, Paul? You're six foot two, six. You're you're over six two, are you? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's my excuse for being uh, for, for not being good at body weight exercises. Okay, is <laughs> being tall and having long arms and legs. Yeah. yeah okay. But what do you find? Do you, is there any exercises that you think you find you find easier or that lend themselves to being taller? Apart from like basketball or something like that. Well, not necessarily height, but uh, I find the rack position in kettlebell sport pretty easy. Mm. So find it, finding that kind of flexion position with the uh, elbows on the iliac crest, that's that's pretty easy. That's, I'm quite comfortable there. I think actually I've decided to go with biathlon as opposed to the long cycle because because I don't really struggle just doing the uh, the kettlebell jerk for for 10 minutes well i do struggle with it for 10 minutes but but i don't find the rack position the issue hmm. yeah i find actually because i've got i think when we did the sfg2 last uh last may fabio said because i've got long forearms you know long long arms and for me i can actually because when i do my pressing i've got my elbow on my hip but i don't mm. need to kind of um you know, kind of curve the spinal. I don't, it doesn't look excessive when I when I I'm yeah. just there because I've got a long arm. I can kind of just be fairly upright, and my elbow can rest on the on the on the on the iliac crest quite nicely. So 
yeah so for me i find that quite nice as well for, from that position even though i've got long arms so then to press it up high is quite long but in that rack position i i feel fairly comfortable there as well yeah i agree with that i think i think most people could probably do a single arm rack because you can shift the hips to one side and yeah you, you can kind of contort yourself the, the, the a double elbow position can be more challenging i mean i know there's a lot of people out, i mean people don't always i mean there's obviously some people kind of evolve to certain sports because their body type makes it easier for them to excel but it's surprising that you'll see people who don't have in don't have a what you would say ideal body uh shape you know maybe a long torso and short legs um doing kettlebell sport you know or um, I mean, I'm sure there's a variety of different kind of people who squat, who are really good at squatting, but don't have the limb length that's, uh, um, that's ideal, you know, that there's always, I think good training and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, the right mindset can generally overcome a lot of genetic limitations to a degree, mm. uh, certainly on the kind of above average level. I mean, maybe at the elite, you get kind of. You know, you're never going to get a six foot five gymnast, are you? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The t- like you say, at the top top level of of sport, it's it's kind of um, yeah, genetics mm. and geography, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, that's probably the thing that I, I've kind of forgotten the question. But I think <laughs> I think you're talking about is there anything I find easy? Is yeah. That is that we? Yeah. Yeah, but well, because it. because of your because of your height, you know, I'm just trying to think any exercises that you, but not but. Yeah, that was a question originally, yeah. No, generally, I'll use my height and my limb legs as an excuse while everything else is hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's good. Uh, it's, it's, a good it's, a good, uh, it's a good way of creating excuses. That's what I'd say. <laughs> okay, so, so being tall is good for excuses. Yeah, apart from <laughs> reaching like cereal on top shelves of supermarkets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. No, one uh, totally separate tangent. One of the things I've been um, doing with my with my group recently is um, we've been we've been doing these, and I know Pete, you've done things like this before. But the the, the gratitudes um, again, we're doing it for a second week, going through every morning, and uh, and so it, it works. Some people really find it helpful. I personally find it really helpful for myself, but some people don't find it as helpful. But I find sitting down in the morning first thing before I've done anything really with the day, writing a list of three three kind of gratitudes or th- three things that I'm grateful for in the last 14 days has really shifted my 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 mindset really and my my mentality because it, it, it totally just skews your focus towards the positive and towards what's good rather than waking up and the first thing you get hit by is a wave of all the stuff you've got to do that day and the problems that you've got to you know deal with. So I've I've found that that really good i mean is that something that you uh, you you do you do that yourself pete i know you've done things like that in the past i know certainly yeah um yeah i mean i with the people who i do on i've got an online product hmm. product system well anyway it's it's we, we talk twice a week and it's based on like a, a four pillar system and counting your wins is one of them so mm. one of the, the there's four pillars to it, and one of them is um, I mean I didn't develop this. This is I've learned this from someone else, and I just I just use it because I use it for myself. And it it's one part of kind of le- listening to yourself and how you speak to yourself because there's one of those things that lots of people have said, haven't they? It's like if you if you let someone else speak to you how you speak you how your subconscious speaks to yourself. You'd, you'd punch him in the face because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're like that's really horrible but you get away with doing it yourself and you do it subconsciously day after day after day all day long um so there's one part learning the language that you use to do that but you have to be careful with that because it's it you know you can then write loads of stuff down and be like i'm i'm mental i'm crazy me i'm i'm never going to get past all of this but then the other three parts are kind of building that back up so mm. it's one part sort of can be a bit negative, but then the other three parts are designed to come straight after that and build it back up. So one of those is, is counting your wins mm. and you can do it any, any time you like, or through, I do it throughout the day as I go now, I'm like, Oh, there's a win. There's a win. There's a win. Mm. Um, and you start to realize there's more than you think. Cause people think they need to 
hit the hit the hit the slam dunks, don't they? Or the, the home runs or whatever. And it's like, no, 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 it's just getting consistency in it first. Because apparently um 80% of our thoughts subconsciously are just are negative or looking for looking for dangers and stuff like that, you know, because we've evolved to do that, haven't we? So this it literally writing your wins down. So, so I do it at night and then it changes your state of mind of like going to bed. You go to bed in a more positive frame of mind. So you're more likely to sleep because you're not waiting for danger to show up. But it actually literally changes your neurology as well because it changes it from naturally looking to looking for negative to actually looking for positive. Hmm. Um, and it really works. Like I've when people first come into that program, I'm like, count your wins because it's the easiest thing to do. And that starts to change their outlook on things. And it's like, right now you can start to look at other things, but that's, that's the main, that's the first one, basically. So yeah, you do, no. you do it as gratitude, you said. Yeah. Right. I've started doing these, these gratitudes. I mean, I did do it. There was a book that I read a number of years ago now, probably five or six years ago called the miracle morning. And that was kind of like a, a morning routine, which had kind of, uh savers s-a-v-e-r-s six six kind of things it was quite an involved pro didn't necessarily need to take very long but it was a six step thing you wake up in the morning you do and it kind of it was really really good um to do and i did it for a long time and like all good things you kind of you stop doing it. you can't remember why you stopped doing it but um but the the gratitude thing i i find I really like because I kind of get up, wake up in the morning and just think straight away before anything's happened. So it's not about a win that I've had that day. It's kind of just what I'm grateful for, you know, first thing in the morning. Yeah. Um, and it just shifts my mind. It just shifts, sh just shifts my mindset first thing in the morning. And that's been really, really, really helpful. And just, you mentioned sleep there, like um, getting, you know, going to bed on a more positive kind of note there was something that i've that i'm going to do with the group actually that it's this three stage thing before sleep which i've written it down actually is it was it was uh just just sort of three simple things so uh three hours before going to bed you know stop eating or ideally you don't really eat within three hours of going to bed two hours before bed probably stop drinking and one hour before bed try and stop you know screens and you know phones and and tv and all that sort of stuff and um and that's kind of a good framework as well i think because the sleep mm. that's something that we i've spent a lot of time with people trying to work on sleep and um and i was chatting to a guy the other day at the gym and he'd only had he was really struggling in the morning he trained at 9 a.m i think and he was really low on energy you know we spoke about how and he only got like he only had five hours sleep the night before you know and i'm like well that's not enough, you know, and he would routinely be getting, you know, five hours, five or six hours, you know, and the other night I had like eight or nine. I try and go for a minimum of seven, you know, um, what's your right? What's your kind of sleep? What are you, what are you guys? What's your kind of, if you have a target sort of hours that you try and give yourself, what, what is it? Pete? Um, oh, or Paul oh, first. Pete. No, Paul first. Sorry. None, none of you. Um, I mean, I, uh... I try, I like to get seven, but, um, you know, sometimes I don't get home till like quarter to 10 at night. Hmm. And, uh, and then you're up at six in the morning. So, you know, and, the, and I haven't eaten. So, you know, you're like, you finish work at say quarter past nine and you've got to cycle back home and then eat something. So I try to get to bed by about quarter past 11. So, um, and then, then I'll be up at anywhere between five and 6 AM, mm. um, probably Monday to Friday. Um, yes, yeah, so you're probably so that's, under, that's the biggest... yeah, I was going to say you're probably underslept then, aren't you? I'd imagine most of the oh, time. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. And then the weekends, you know, the, it's funny how you can't get the kids up during the week. Um, <laughs> and then at the weekend they're up at like five in the morning. So, um. Yeah, that's it. That's I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, sleep for me is just it's I'm pretty good at sleeping when I'm sleeping. It's just either side of it. You know, when I'm asleep, I'm asleep. I don't really wake up in the middle of the night with like problems or anything like that. Um, I don't you know, it's not like I've had too much coffee or something like that. It's, just, it's literally just 
managing the workload either side because i think it's just the nature of personal training it's you know it's on social hours um and it's not like i sleep during i've never slept during the day i've never been i've never really had time to nap during the day hmm. God. how about you pete are you i'd imagine you're pretty pretty good are you well i've got any kids so you know, yeah, I know, which, but yeah, it's makes like, it a lot easier. Paul's just—I feel tired just listening to Paul. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. but no, we um, yes, we we actually probably we go to bed roughly the same time every night, every day of the week. Yeah, which is too. one of the things in Matthew Walker's book, isn't it? Why we sleep, and he's like, you know, because people end up hitting Monday morning absolutely knackered because they've been they've been staying up really late all weekend. And it's, this is just how our life falls now. So we're going to bed about 10 o'clock um, and read, like, I'll just read a book. And um, and then, you know, if, when I'm falling asleep doing that, Sean will drop her book on the floor. That's when that's when she's done, which is about 30 seconds after she started reading, <laughs> reading it. Um, you know, and then, and then she sleeps really well. And then, yeah, so like anywhere between, you know, 10 and half 10. And then I'm up at six most mornings, three mornings a week, hmm. and like 6.30 on, on another two, because I because those are the days I don't have to get up to do sessions. So, and then weekends, we don't set an alarm to get up or anything at the weekend, um, but we're still we're still in bed by like 10 o'clock in the, in the evenings. But what you said about switching TV off and, and, and screens before you go to bed, I speak to people who like wait and watch the news before they go to bed. And I'm no, like, so that's the worst how, thing. In the world, how, are gonna, how are you going to get yeah. a good night's kip after that? You know, it's yeah. like, all the, here's what's wrong in the world. Good night. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. um, at the end of Crime Watch when they used to tell you to not have nightmares. Yeah, don't have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because I think. I would, yeah, go on. Sorry, Paul. I would like what my kids have, you know, when they were like three or four, which you get to watch uh, in the night garden before I go to bed. You know, something nice and relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they should have an in the night garden for gut for adults. You know, well, still, well, no, you just you just need to you just need to watch telly on mushrooms and you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, still, yeah, still for the kids now. I mean, my kids are in bed for you know for seven p.m. Both of them, and they're you know, um, and and we do, you know, they kind of so they have like a shower or a bath and then they have stories and then they get a bed. And so they haven't, they're not sitting watching screens, obviously like, and that's the thing what, and then when they're in bed, they don't, they just, they just, they're just gone, you know? So I think um, what I did, well, again, this goes back to, it was a lot, it was, it was over, it's probably a couple of years ago. I set myself this kind of a goal to be in bed by um, at the latest or half 10. Then that kind of migrated earlier, not consciously, or I didn't, change it officially but then it became really i'm never in bed after 10 and now i'd say a lot of the time i'll be yeah going to bed between sort of like half nine and ten you know and then i'm always up um around sort of quarter past five half past five but i still make sure so i'm still getting a minimum of seven hours. That's my, you know, that is my absolute minimum, you know, so I just kind of work out when I've got to get up and work reverse engineer it back. But like you say, I'm kind of Saturday night, I'll be in bed at half nine, you know, Sunday night, I'll be in bed at half, you know, I'm always going to be in bed at that time. Um, And I'm always going to be up seven days a week. You know, a real lay in would be like half six, you know what I mean? In the morning. So I'm always up kind of at, the same sort of time, you know, between say certainly between like half five and half six, you know, or quarter past five and quarter past six, you know, I'll be up. So uh, I think that's, yeah. And that's just so, and that's why I really like this three, two, one. So I'm going to kind of, but like you said, Paul, if you're getting back at 10 PM and then eating, I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of decided to, um, to try and eat earlier in the day. Do you know what I mean? So I will eat my big meal, like lunchtime or early afternoon or mid afternoon so that then if I'm at the gym, like tonight, I'll be at the gym till after nine, but I won't come home and then eat like that late because then I know that's going to impact my sleep. You know, I won't, I just won't sleep as well if I've eaten um, that late, but it's obviously different for everyone, you know, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind eating late. I mean, particularly as I've, I've only really got Sainsbury's next to me and, you know, after a while, you know, because I can't cook any food, you just end up having these kind of 
the same old lunch. Uh, I suppose you could do stuff in advance, but um, I quite like coming home. I'll just do something quick, you know, like a steak or something. And mm. I don't tend to have too many carbs before I go to sleep. You know, I'll just have some fruit or whatever, and I'll have decent proteins and stuff like that. And um, that seems to work for me. You know, once I, uh, if I, if I have something too kind of like, late in the afternoon then i just feel too heavy for sessions hmm. do you do you um do you go home in the day or are you at the gym all day i'm pretty much in the gym all day so if oh, i'm okay yeah yeah i mean i mean if obviously i i mean i don't do 6 a.m till 9 p.m every day but um you know if i'm in at 9 a.m and i have to work until eight well sometimes i'll come back but it's usually just to pick the kids up so i'll pick the kids up and then i'll uh, drop them off make them dinner then go back down again you know hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, I think this is good though, because it's showing, I mean, everyone who listens is going to be in a different situation, aren't they? With, uh, you know, maybe working or shift work or, uh, you know, different responsibilities uh, and, and things like that. So it's just trying to find something that works works for you. But I think however you kind of manage it, trying to make sure that you get a decent seven-ish hours a night is a good goal to have, you know, um, and how you decide to manage that or how you organize that is going to be down to uh, down to each individual. But uh, it's how you can how you can make that happen, because uh, I think that that that's been a real game changer for me. You know, since I've decided that is a priority for me, the sleep, um, it's kind of once I made that like a non-negotiable, it's 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 just kind of has become what it what it's become. And it's kind of been been that way for a few years, which I think is a uh, is really good. Um, Cool. Well, I think we'll start to wrap up there, guys. I mean, we've got three, um, we've got three uh, weeks coming up with, uh, with some special guests uh, coming up, which is going to be fantastic. Um, and obviously, like you said, Paul, we've got summer approaching as well. Um, and yeah, there's going to be lots of positive things, I think, going on over the summer for all of us uh, in terms of the gyms and the clubs that we run and the people that we train and things. And and obviously the guests that we get coming on. We've got some great guests coming up uh, in the next few weeks. Um, how's all the work going at your place, Paul? Is it OK? Are you, are you, are you nearly done? Are you nearly? Is the drilling finished? Oh, it, it's almost finished. Yeah, yeah. Just moving weight plates on the wall. So it's because uh, it's concrete walls. It takes quite a long time to get get the bolts in and secure. Don't want any weights falling off the walls, do you? No, no, you certainly don't. No, you don't want that. No. Okay, kid. Uh, right. Well, any final thoughts? Anything anyone likes to say before we wrap up? Well, Jerry Springer's. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, was it Jerry, Jerry Springer, Springer died, died didn't, he? didn't he? Jerry Springer yeah. died. Yeah, he did. Take care of yourselves and each other. And each other, yeah. Mm. yeah. Did you see yeah. the um, the thing about the footage from Jerry Springer's funeral, which was the fight in the church <laughs> of, <laughs> off um, Kingsman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was good. That was good. There you go. Cool. All right, guys. So next week we are joined by, I think we're joined by... Chris Branch next week from uh, Forte Physical Health. So uh, we'll be joined by Chris next week uh, for episode 145. We are closing in on episode 150, um, which is a big round sort of a number and it's a big landmark episode. And we are in the process of lining up a, uh, a special guest for episode 150 or possibly guests uh, in the plural we will see but yeah episode 150 we've got coming up in a few weeks uh, which will be great um obviously next week i'll report back on how we've gone with the flexible steel and the strong first body weight uh stuff with john engham over with us and uh, we will see you all next week thank you very much for listening please do like share subscribe leave a review if you're listening or watching on a platform that allows you to do so um Please also give us a like or a follow on Instagram, on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube for us, which will help us help us get out there with our reach a little bit more. Um, and if you'd like to join the Facebook group, just go into groups on Facebook and search Health Oddity and one of us will let you in. We will see you next week for episode 145. Bye bye.